This video is going to show you how to factor using the distributive property. We've also used um, this property in the past when we were factoring in section 10.6, but we called it the grouping method. So really the factoring using the distributive property or the grouping method is pretty much the same thing. The polynomials in section 10.8 are going to have four terms. So typically we're used to seeing something with only three terms or two terms, but in this case it'll have four terms. So these polynomials are set up for us to solve using, I'm sorry, to factor using the distributive property or the grouping method, which we talked about um, earlier in the chapter. So just like when we did the grouping method, we're going to group the first two terms together and the second two terms together. We're going to factor out the GCF in each binomial. So when I look at my first binomial, I have x cubed plus 2x squared. So my GCF is going to be x squared. When I factor out an x squared, I'm going to get x plus 2 inside my binomial. Okay, now I need to factor out my GCF in my binomial, which is 3x plus 6. So my, bino my, uh, my greatest common factor is going to be 3. So when I take a 3 out, I'm left with x plus 6. I'm sorry, x plus 2. Let me erase that. I'm going to be left with x plus 2. Okay, a couple things are happening right here. First of all, you'll notice that these two binomials are exactly the same as they should be. All right, and my greatest common factors are going to be written out here, so in front of the two binomials. From here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the reverse distributive property to write my answer. So my answer is going to look like x squared plus 3, in parentheses, times x plus 2. As always, to check my final answer, I can use the FOIL method to multiply these two binomials out. And if I get my original polynomial, I know I did my work right. So here is my answer in factored form. Here's the next polynomial I need to factor. x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4. So just like in my last example, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to group the first two terms together and the second two terms together. Now this one's a little tricky because I have a subtraction sign right here. So I want to make sure that I don't lose that negative or the subtraction. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to factor out the GCF out of my first binomial. So my uh, GCF is going to be x squared. So I'll get x squared times x plus 1. Then I'm going to go ahead and factor out um, my GCF out of my second binomial. Now if you remember what happened in my last example, I had two matching binomials. So my goal here is to get an x plus 1 to be left inside this set of parentheses here. So it matches my first set of parentheses, so I can use the reverse distributive property to factor my answer. Now in order for me to get x plus 1 here, I need to factor out a negative 4. So just to double check my work here, if I do negative 4 times x, I'll get negative 4x, and negative 4 times 1, I'll get negative 4. So that tells me I correctly and properly factored out the greatest common factor, which is negative 4. Now if you feel the need to change this to plus a negative, go right ahead. Alright, so just like in the last example, I'm going to go ahead and put my binomials together, starting with x plus 1, so that's a repeat, so I'm going to write that first. Doesn't matter what order you write it though, but I'll put it first. And then my second binomial is going to be x squared minus 4. Now, I'm not officially or finally, I don't have this finally factored. I hope you notice that x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. So I can factor that again. So when we did section 10-7, uh, we factored x squared minus 4 into x plus 2 times x minus 2. Then, of course, I need to bring down x plus 1 in my problem. So my final answer is three binomials, x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. 
So this is factored completely. The last check I always want to do when I'm factoring is to see if I have any greatest common factors left inside my binomials, in which case I don't, so I know that this is the final answer. The absolute last thing that I can do is check my work by um, multiplying these, trino these binomials together. And again, if I get my final, if I get this um, polynomial up here, then I know I did my work correctly.